is up, everybody? Welcome to another edition of the Opening Tea Podcast. This is Jason Rosal, your host for this little short form podcast. What I do instead of doing just one one hour long podcast, I do three 20 to 15 minutes, maybe 10 minutes if there's not a ton going on, uh, for a total of about 40 to 50 minutes a week. I just find it as a better way to consume the content. At least for me, it gives me a better way to present all of the material, at least in a little better fashion. So uh, if this is your first time joining, I appreciate it. And thank you so much uh, for the listen. And of course, if you guys could like like, and subscribe uh, to our podcast channel, that would, of course, greatly appreciate uh, getting the reach out there uh, to uh, anybody that wants to join in. Uh, of course, the community growing, that's what it's all about, uh, especially the Slack, uh, internal Slack that we have going on at uh, Osmo here. So if you're not a member, great time to join. All right, now I start off every single week is uh, the foursome of facts from the previous week. So this is just gonna give you kind of a little bit of tidbits that I have come up with um, for the week that I thought were important and uh, going forward from there. Okay, so let's go right into it. And what would be if we weren't talking about the foursome of facts last week and we didn't at least mention Bryson DeChambeau here for a minute. Of course, every podcast or piece of content that you listen to this week is likely to talk about him for a little bit. And it's warranted, and it's granted. He's earned that right with how hard he's worked and finally now getting through with the win. Um, There's been a lot of information, a a lot of cameras on him, and it caught him doing a Sergio-esque type of temper tantrum in the bunker. And Bryson was none too pleased with the cameraman for focusing on him during that time. But here's the thing. I I love Bryson and the way Bryson goes about trying to change the game and, and, and trying to go above and beyond what everybody else is doing. But he's getting, I guess, maybe a little bit of, of overzealous there um, because if he wants to be the best, he has to understand that the cameras are always going to follow him. And, you know, I saw it on Twitter. I'm not alone in this opinion, but imagine if Tiger Woods ever acted that way. I mean, this guy had a camera on him at all times. Just watching the last dance with the, the Michael Jordan thing, I mean, that alone goes to show you what that kind of superstardom can bring. So if Bryson wants to get to that level... He's going to have to learn to deal with the cameras being on him at all times, and I'm sure he will. He's still a he's still a young kid there by by any stretch. Uh, so I think maybe also there was a little bit of blow-up. I, I mean, he's eating like 49 protein shakes a day, so there's got to be a little bit of an imbalance there maybe and maybe a little bit of a short fuse or shorter fuse than, than we've seen in the past from him. All right, my uh, second fact is actually going to be the European Tour. It returns to action next week for the first time since uh, the uh, COVID problem has arised. Two weeks in Austria where we're probably going to get a lot of um, secondary fields, I'll call them. The prize pools are only 500,000 euros, so uh, just a way to get these guys back out and playing. A couple of the names that you may be familiar with, uh, Yus Lauten, Andre Arnu, and Thomas Dietrich. Just three names that are kind of in that pack of European players that uh, you may or may not have heard about. Uh, I'm sure there'll be DraftKings contests for it. Okay, um, the third one is dealing with Matthew Wolf. This is two years in a row where he's played well on July 4th. Just a random factoid. But maybe more importantly is how we arrived at the Matt Wolf play as he was I wasn't the only one in the industry on him um, but certainly what led to picking him uh, was pretty clear over the previous three weeks although he hadn't put it all together all parts of his game had shown improvement at one time or another um, you couldn't say that about everybody that was playing in the field and obviously we know his talent level so um, just wanted to bring that up I'm, maybe the July 4th thing is real because Daniel Berger has won on three of the same weekends, the two FedEx and then the, the RBC. I mean, it's, it's absolutely insane. Um, a lot of noise there, but just a, a random factoid nonetheless. All right, the last one I have is Ryan Armour shows you that the little guy can still compete. I mean, shoot, I could even throw Kevin Kisner in there. They're very similar type players. You know, they go 3-4 in this tournament. They show you that there's always going to be a spot for good golf, whether you're hitting at 380 or 280. They're going to show you that there's room for good golf no matter what type of player you are. And that's what it's always important. I, we can't get lost in this distance debate with, with Bryson and Wolf. we got to understand that you know these guys, these little plotters, are always going to be there as well still. Um, whether they're in the top five 
or winning the tournament, they're still going to make a, an extremely good living out there and certainly help our, our PGA DFS lineups, no doubt about that. All right, let's move on to my high and low for the week. First one, I had a case of the onesies this week. Uh, EVR killed one of uh, my $500 teams with Wolf and DeChambeau, although it's still cashed. It obviously would have cashed a lot more. Nate Lashley's miss on the last hole killed a lot of six of six chances for me. Uh, and Aaron Wise basically took out all the rest. Uh, three big misses. Uh, the Wolf, uh, Matt Wolf and Bryson calls. Obviously, I, I said I was all in on Bryson, and I, for the most part, was. You know, I made uh, close to 350 lineups, and I think he was in about 335 of them um, across across the sites. So, as all in as I can get, um, and I was all over Matthew Wolf as well, which. Help me have a positive week overall, only because uh, of his odds and how uh, nicely that top five payout was. But an all-in on Bryson and a 35% ownership on Matt Wolf, and I still came out negative in uh, PGA DFS. Uh, wasn't a catastrophic week, not not that bad, but still a losing week, uh, and you hate to see that when you have one two on the board. Um, but that it just goes to show you how hard the game can be. Also, fading Patrick Reed, I did that as well, and still uh, that couldn't get me over the uh, finish line. Um, however, where I did have some pretty good success and I was profitable uh, for the past couple of weeks is Superdraft, who is the sponsor of our show. And if you haven't played Superdraft, it's the future of daily fantasy sports that has arrived. Experience Superdraft's exclusive game mode multiplier. Say goodbye to salary restrictions and hello to lineup freedom. Use your fantasy sports knowledge to draft any player you want and build your very own dream team. Countless lineup possibilities let you experience daily fantasy sports the way you want. Superdraft offers contests for right now for PGA, NASCAR, MMA, so you can enjoy the best of DFS all year round, especially when they're going to be offering NBA and NFL uh, and the like. So sign up for Superdraft today, uh, and of course, if you're going to use the promo code AWESOMEO10 this time, it's $10 free on your first deposit of 10 or more and 20 total free on your first 100 or more. And of course, if you are on an iPhone, you can download it in the App Store or play it on Superdraft.io. Superdraft, no limits and more winning. All right, one of my favorite segments out there is your not your average cut sweat segment. I mean, this is the content writes itself. That's why it's kind of fun for me. But we're going to start off with the guy that provides me possibly the most content in this section out of any other golfer. And it is Cameron Davis. Oh, my goodness. Cameron Davis, he is notorious for not only moving cut lines but also missing them as well i distinctly remember a tournament it might have been mayakoba where he it was it was t uh it was on the, the old rules so it was t71 and he needs to just par from the green side to knock everybody out green side bunker and instead he makes six so he misses the cut and moves the cut line with him it was unbelievable now here we are flash forward uh to the rocket mortgage classic this week Shoots one under on the first round, but played pretty good. He gets it all the way to five under, was four under for the day, heading to the ninth hole. Put it front right in the fairway, about 41 feet from the hole. It was the spot to miss. It was a front left pin location. You know, if you're a golfer, you know the miss you know, on a front left. is a, It's good to be in the fairway or, or just on the front of the green to the right. It's not that hard of a putt on Donald Ross's. So he did. He put up a nice chip or putt, whatever he used. They didn't show it on television. Uh, put it up to three feet. And uh, it was a three foot, three inch putt. Uh, and when I refreshed the tour cast the next time, it said two feet, seven inches from the hole and uh, made for a bogey. So Cam Davis misses another cut on a blow up on the last hole, missing a, <laughs> missing a three footer, a three footer. He's not the only one that missed a putt though, uh, coming on the 18th hole. I've got some other great ones here. Uh, Nate Lashley, all he needs to do is make a par on 18. He was 160 yards out. Only spot he couldn't miss was left. He missed left and then missed a 20-footer coming back. So those are the two stories that I have now. I'm going to tell you a bunch of missed putts, all right? Scott Brown, all, all of these guys needed to make the putt to make the, uh, make the putt to make the cut, all right? We got Scott Brown, missed a 14-footer. Chesson Hadley, missed a 13-footer. Sam Ryder, missed a 20-footer. Ricky Barnes, missed a 16-footer. Jason Day, missed a 9-footer. Ben Martin, missed a 16-footer. Greg Chalmers, missed a 10-footer. Nate Lashley, missed a 25-footer. Cam Davis, missed a 3-footer. Peter Malnati, missed a 20-footer. Roger Sloan, missed an 8-footer. 
And that all leads me to Tony Finau made a 20-footer to make the cut. After all that, Tony Finau, one of the worst putters on the tour this year, ends up making the cut. Goes out and shoots six under the next day. Now, granted, he did not have a great Sunday, but still, he put up a lot of points for people. Uh, and certainly, if you got six of six with him through, uh, you likely cashed. It's very unlikely that you didn't. So I wanted to bring that up. Just really funny uh, how that works sometimes. Maybe there's not too much to learn there. Uh, of course, Matthew Wolf was in this segment last week in this exact, uh, you know, not your average sweat. So maybe you can take a guy that looks to be close, um, that, that missed the cut right on the number and go from there. Uh, another thing, uh, as we transition, I should say, into the next segment, this is maybe one where you can glean a little bit of information and look forward into the upcoming week. The first one is the, uh, and this is the statistical review of last week. What I do is I compare the new age strokes gain statistics to the uh, old age, uh, more uh, rudimentary stats like driving accuracy and distance. Okay, so let's start off with off the tee. Strokes gain off the tee, Bryson DeChambeau led. Oh, no surprise there. Uh, Cameron Champ was number two. Seamus Power was number three. Now let's go look at driving distance real quick. Number one, two, three was DeChambeau, Champ, and Power. So... Direct correlations between one, two, three there. Maybe a little uh, off after that. Ventura was number four. Shank five. Wierenski six. Merritt seven. Chapel was eight. Then when we look at uh, driving accuracy, Henrik Norlander was one. Troy Merritt was two. So a little crossover with Merritt. Lucas Glover with, was three. So crossover there. Wierenski was number four on driving accuracy. Crossover there. Then Adam Shank. Crossover there. Webb Simpson. Wes Bryan. Arjan Atwal and Sung M on the driving accuracy portion. So very interesting. The one, two, three on driving distance were one, two, three on OTT, but then you saw a lot of guys that were hitting a lot of fairways gaining strokes off the tee. So definitely a combined way of doing that last week, or this week, I should say, this past week uh, at Detroit Golf Club. Very interesting there. All right, when we move on to strokes gain on the approach, Henrik Norlander led the field this week. KH Lee was number two, Hudson Swafford. Number three, Victor Hovland. What a surprise. Number four, Ryan Armour was number five. Had that hole in one. I would hope that he would maybe be in the top five. Lucas Glover, number six. Real good ball striking week, week for Lucas Glover. Hideki Masayama, number seven. Wes Bryan, number eight. Webb Simpson, number nine. And Kevin Kisner, number ten. Switching over to greens and regulation. Let's see if we can get any uh, crossovers here. Adam Shank and Adam Hadwin were one, two. Lucas Glover, it was number three. Harold Varner, four. Cam Champ, 5. Ricky Fowler, 6. Cam Tringale, 7. Danny Willett, 8. Hovland, 9. Wierenski, 10. Brian, 11. So we got maybe 3 or 4 in the greens and regulation crossover. Two strokes gained on the approach. Obviously, uh, if you have a direct crossover, uh, that's the best thing because not only are they hitting greens, but they're hitting it close. Um, normally, if they're hitting it close, but they're not hitting as many greens, uh, the strokes gained approach stat can be maybe a little misleading there. I actually like to tend to really look at greens in regulation um, uh, just because it, it goes to show that they have a, a more control over the golf ball or sometimes it can lead to style of play as well. So it's a bit tricky, um, but I definitely do like to look at it. For age-old statistics, greens and regulation is probably the one I look at most. Okay, moving on to strokes gained putting. Bryson DeChambeau led the field this week. Scott Harrington was number two. Maverick McNeely, number three. Tom Lewis, four. Matt Wolf, Ty Hatton. Troy Merritt, Pat Perez, Chris Stroud, and Brendan Hagee round out the top 10 or so. Putts per GIR, we're going to probably see a lot of crossover here. Uh, Matt Wolf, Kevin Kisner, Brian Stewart, Ryan Armour, Ty Hatton, Chris Kirk, DeChambeau, Rogers, and Spawn. So plenty of crossover there. All right, this week, uh, I'm going to add in strokes gained around the green uh, before I do the birdie review because I believe this week will be one of the most uh, used. That'll be the one of the most used attributes of the week. Uh, so Chris Kirk. A lot of uh, good work around the greens, as did Luke, Don Luke Donald, Cameron Tregale, Ryan Gibson, Jonathan Bird, Ryan Armour, Troy Merritt, Arjan Atwal, and Adam Hadwin. All right, before we move on to the Workday Charity Open, let's talk about the birdies. You know, birdie or better review, I should say. And Matt Wolf, 31 birdie or betters this week. 30 birdies, one eagle. Incredible. Bryson DeChambeau had, uh, I believe it was 28 or 29. The next best one was Cameron Champ at 23, so five below these guys, really incredible. And then a bunch of guys at 22, including Ty Hatton, Tom Lewis, Kevin Kisner, Mark Hubbard, Doc Redman, and Hideki Matsuyama. All right, so I mentioned off the top of the show, it is a great time to join Osmo 
uh, plus. Now, not only are you getting PGA, MMA, soccer, esports, but we're getting NBA back in a couple of weeks. There's a Millionaire Maker already posted for it. Looks like MLB is going to come back at the end of the month. So it is a great time to come in and join uh, Osmo Plus Side. It's only $8.95 a week for golf, of course, if you're looking to just get into golf right now before the other sports come back. Um, but of course, always check out our Twitter where we're doing a ton of promos and giveaways uh, each and every week that the PGA Tour is going on. So be sure to follow us at Osmo underscore dot com. Uh, Osmo underscore com, I should say. All right, so let's move on to the Work Day Charity Open, an exciting event, uh, the first of two at the exact same golf course. Now, I know that's a little interesting, and it's going to be the first time, you know, I've been doing this for three or four years. It's the first time that uh, I think the PGA Tour has maybe ever done this, um, or at least somewhat. Uh, so it'll be a new change for everybody. Uh, first, let's start off with a DFS preview. We've got a millionaire maker again, so that was a, just a quick little tidbit there. Um, but back to the golf course. So it's at Muirfield Village, which is a Jack Nicklaus design. I think right off the top, I want to get out that the PGA Tour has already come out and said that they're going to make it different. They're going to attempt to make it different. Two of the ways in which they're going to try and make it different is the rough length, which is not going to be that much this week, and it's going to be much much uh, longer next week. And the other way is the green speeds. They're going to play the green speeds at an 11.0 on the stint meter, which is below average on the PGA Tour or right at the average. Um, but for next week, the Memorial Tournament, which is the bigger tournament, all of the big names will be playing instead of half of the big names like we get this week. In fact, we should get the biggest name in golf still and for the foreseeable future, Tiger Woods. I know Bryson's making a lot of waves, but listen, people are still going to tune in more to watch Tiger Woods play next week. No doubt in my mind, he should be back. Um, they're going to run the greens at 13 to 13 and a half, which is normally, typically one of the quickest on tour. And uh, that's how Jack likes it there. That's how that course is always played. Um, so just some interesting notes there. So I expect where the course played 13 out of 49 hardest uh, last year, I suspect that this week the scoring average will not be over par like it was last year. It was about, oh, about 0.2 over par. I suspect it'll be under par and we're looking at it like a minus three or four cut uh, because when you bring down the green speeds, you, you prevent a lot of those three putts on the other side of them. Um, you know, what Muirfield Village is known for is the green complexes. And of course, uh, when you have your runoffs, when the greens are running 13, they're so hard to hold, which brings in the contours that Jack Nicklaus so craftily designed here. Um, so that's why I, I think the scores will be much better in week one than they are week two. But of course, I could be totally proven wrong. Um, that's just kind of where I'm going at now. All right, let's learn about a little about about Muirfield Village. Four par threes, 200, 185, 185, and 201. Ten par fours, 470, 455, 401, 447, 412, 471, 455, 363, 478, and 484. So very interesting. Only one under 400 yards, none over 400 though. So. Par fours, 400 to 500. Efficiency this week, very important. A lot of 150 yard, 175 yard approach shots coming up, no doubt about it. Four par fives, so the Bombers uh, are definitely gonna have maybe a little bit of an advantage there. 527, 563, 567, and 529. So not a ton of length to them by any stretch, but still uh, trouble lurking all around them. Okay, so that all equals up to a par 72, 7,400 yards. Driving accuracy, it was in the top 20 easiest last year at driving accuracy, so fairways hit over 70%. Driving distance, however, a lot of club downs on some of these par fours where there's maybe a little bit of a tighter landing range. Uh, 15th out of 49 in terms of overall driving distance, so not a ton of spots to bomb it. Uh, for greens and regulation, we got just, um, looks like, just under 63 or 64%, so relatively hard to hit. Um, on average, uh, the strokes gained around the green was the most difficult. In terms of scrambling, it was the seventh hardest on tour last year. So as I talked about, somebody that's really good and crafty around the greens will certainly uh, be more beneficial here this week or can utilize that skill in their game a lot better. Uh, when you're on the greens, they're not that bad. Uh, Top 15 easiest on tour, it looks like, uh, on the stats that I'm looking. So uh, once you're on there, like I said, you have an opportunity to score or at least save your pars, um, but that hasn't always happened. 
Okay, so now when we move on to the field, it's a pretty, because it's a work day charity event, they're using the basic and normal PGA Tour uh, qualifications. So I'll just run through them relatively quickly, or I'm not even gonna run through them. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give you the names that maybe are a little bit interesting and the sponsors exemptions. So this week, uh, career money exemptions, Luke Donald, Steve Stricker, Bovan Belt, and KJ Choi are in it. And sponsor exemption, we're gonna get Jerry Kelly. So he's a <laughs> PGA Tour Champions guy. Chase Kepka is getting the start after having to withdraw from the Travelers out of an abundance of caution. He's getting the nod. And Brandon Wu, who I believe also tested positive, is getting a sponsor exemption into this week. No Will Gordon, however. Lifetime members VJ Singh and Davis Love are playing here this week. And then we got a couple of non-members uh, playing for the Euro Tour. Matthew Fitzpatrick, Matt Wallace, and Lucas Beauregard. So no Benz and Hoot, uh, no South African gentleman. Uh, Benz and Hoot and Van Royen, I should say. I believe Ustazen is playing, so I shouldn't say none. Okay. Quick statistical review for this week before I give you my top six salary guesses, which uh, last week, you know, honestly, I didn't do too bad. I got all the guys correct and who they would be. I even got a few prices right. So not bad for me. I'll give myself a solid B plus there. Okay, uh, before I do that, though, stats for this week. I already mentioned uh, approaches from 150 to 175. And then I want to look at strokes gained on the approach plus strokes gained around the greens. Patrick Cantlay did very well in both those categories last year, and I believe that's a formula to really win. So when you are hitting it on the green, you're hitting it close, and when you're not hitting it on the green, your around the green game is good enough to save you. So that's what I'm looking for uh, this week. Approaches uh, proximity from 150 to 175 on top of that, as I mentioned. All right, now we're gonna cap it off with a little top six salary guesses of the week. John Rahm, I think that they're probably ready to go back to him at 11,000 as the top price guy in the field. I don't think they're gonna put Brooks there. They haven't priced Brooks above John Rahm in quite a while, so I don't think they're gonna start this week. However, because it, they haven't priced Rahm that high, and it's a better field. I think they only go up to 11,000, maybe 11,200 for Rom. I think that they go Kepka next at 10.8. And then I think Cantley coming in, defending champion, he's going to be 10.6. They might even price him above Kepka, although last time out, two weeks ago at the Travelers, Kepka was $200 more than Cantley. Maybe because Cantley won here last year, they flip flopped those this week, but definitely going to see those two, those three in the top. Then I think you're going to get Xander Shoffley at four since he had a pretty decent week. Then I think you're going to get Justin Rose and Hideki Matsuyama at 5'6", more than likely, uh, based on what I'm seeing in the field. I got Xander at 10'4", I got Rose at 10'2", and I got Matsuyama at flat 10 this week. All right, so that will do it. Uh, of course, if you're looking for more information or a little bit more detailed information about some of this stuff that I went over or the statistical measures from this week, check out the First Cut article that is uh, live now and free, of course, every single week on the Osmo site. Uh, and of course, if you have any questions for me, hit me up in the Slack chat if you're an Osmo Plus member, or if not, find me on Twitter at DFSGolfer23. So until next time, everybody, thanks for listening, and we'll see you on the other side. Cheers.